Unlock the power of MCP servers. When MCP servers first came out, I thought they were too difficult to learn. But once I actually sat down and broke them down piece by piece and fully understood them and used them in my own apps, it 10 x my workflow with building with AI. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how MCP servers let you turn LLM prompts into real actions. We'll cover what MCP servers are and why tools like ChatGPT and Claude use them. I'll show you how I integrate it into one of my own personal full stack apps, Calendar Copilot. And we'll talk about how the same setup can enable your SaaS workflows to grow and expand. Hey guys, I'm Matt Kuda. On this channel, I cover the latest AI news and tech tools. So if you're a seasoned builder or someone just starting out coding, make sure you subscribe for the latest updates. All right, so like I said, MCP servers were the hot thing a few months ago, and I just totally ignored them. I was just working on my own basic AI applications, but I spent the last few weeks learning and building with them. It's really changed how I build everything. I'm not even saying that. So MCP stands for Model Context Protocol, okay? It's a way for you to let your AI models discover and safely use your tools without hard coding every behavior. Because think about how OpenAI language model works right now. You have an application, it's trained on millions of data sets, right? So it's very smart. But if you want to plug in your own data, whether that's your email, whether that's your calendar events, whether that's you know live sports scores or live weather, it's not going to have access to that data. So that's where MCP servers come in to fill in the gap so your language models can make use of the real data. Like I said below, instead of writing custom prompt logic using conditionals, you define these tools once, say what the MCC, MCP servers can do, and then your language models are equipped from there to get the best response. So for instance, when an agent like GPT or Claude connects to your MCP server, it can see a list of tools, understand what each tool does, choose the right tool, it's how you go about from talking about doing something to actually doing it in your application. And these MCP servers don't just read events, they can actually make events as we'll see later when we actually can just type a prompt, say, hey, schedule me an event later. And the language model knows that the MCP calendar server can schedule an event. So it has the, uh, the possibility to go and do that. But before we do that, let's break it down more simply and just explain this with an ice cream shop. That's kind of how I Put it in a metaphor in my head. <clears throat> so imagine you're ordering, you have a kid and you're ordering ice cream for the Mountain Ice Cream Stand. So your kid in this situation is the prompter, right? Because they can't communicate directly to the ice cream stand, whether they're too young or too shy. So you are the middleman. You're the large language model in between that can talk to your kid and communicate with the ice cream stand. Right, and the ice cream stand in the situation is the MCP. It's gonna provide you with tools. So let's say your kid says, I want the most chocolate flavor, right? They can't read the menu, they've never been here before, but they know they want a lot of chocolate, right? So you, the large language model, are gonna say, okay, I know I have to order ice cream here <laughs> for my kid. And then um, the ice cream stand, you know, they usually have the big menu up front, that's where you can call the tool like get flavor list. So you as the adult read the flavor list. Um, you get back vanilla, strawberry, cookie dough, and you know maybe one of them is double chocolate crunch. Okay, now I can determine that's likely what my kid wants. Great. And from when you also you know call the tool calls for what's available at the ice cream stand, you also know you have the possibility to order a flavor. Thus, you say, okay, I know I want to order double chocolate crunch order that for my flavor, get one for my kid, he's who's asked, and then you complete the relationship. So simple example, but <laughs> that's kind of how I saw it in my head. Now let's transition to a real application of MCP in my app Calendar Copilot, which I'll flip to here. So this is a Next.js application I built with an open AI, large language model on the back end, and I'm hosting a MCP server in 
the same repo that is connected to my Google Calendar using a Google service account, which allows it to read events and create events fully with permissions. So in this application down here, I can essentially talk to my calendar and say, what events do I have today, right? Now, of course, there are existing tools like Google Calendar I can flip to and see, but you can imagine when you wanna integrate this with an app, you know, maybe this is my multi-purpose everything app that I have hooked up to, you know, my Google Home or Alexa, where I wanna process my voice and have access to all my data. This is a simple example of that. So I ask it this, what events do I have today? I could phrase this any way I want. It's going to use the Google service account to view our calendar and boom, you can see we have shoulder day today. We can click on the link that it provides. It should take us to our calendar. Yep, we can see that event there. We can also have it create events on our behalf. So we can say, uh, schedule me board game night tomorrow evening. We can send that. Tells us back. Okay, awesome. I've successfully scheduled board game night tomorrow at seven. We can flip to our Google Calendar tab and we can see this new event that did not exist today. Awesome. So let's take a dive into the architecture of this application, see what's actually going on. Our journey starts with the React UI. We type in our prompt to say, what events do I have today? This goes to our API, which first is hooked up to our MCP server. It's first gonna say, okay, what tools do I have? And in this case, it gets back, hey, you have the tool get events range and also create an event. These also have a little more description for what they do, but for simplicity, we have these two tools. And then the large language model is gonna say, hmm, okay, based on the initial prompt to just ask what's going on, I can determine that I wanna use um, the get events range tool call, which is exactly what it's gonna think about right here after it does the thinking, comes back to the API. Okay, let me execute that tool call for this one it has a create event. You can imagine, okay, execute get events in the MCP server. The server has all the permissions already configured for the Google Calendar. It's gonna go and get the events, give it back to the MCP server, which will then talk back to the next JS API, and then finally bring it back, those events, to the front end UI. So, Super simple, and let's look at the actual code. So here we are um, in the main dashboard page. Um, here is the text area where we, on submit, we handle submit prompt. You can see this is gonna trigger our OpenAI calendar um, agent endpoint, which we have um, right here. So if we go to the start of the endpoint, just some basic authentication stuff. We did have some preset up for the calendar ID to enable the service account. And then you can see here, it's first going to call fetch the MCP tools, which is going to pretty much call the slash tools endpoint on our MCP, which we have running in a separate server down here. If we quickly inspect this, yep, just calls the tools endpoint and the response back is going to be a list of objects, which are the tools which are gonna to be used um, later, yep. But before we use them, we just have our main prompt for our backend LLM model to say, hey, your co-pilot co calendar, um, the user's gonna ask you questions about their calendar, whether to make or read events. Um, make sure you use proper 
date formatting, then a simple example here. So once we have the tool definitions we got earlier from the MCP, um, it's going to use that to determine which one of them to call, um, give the prompt with the tool definitions to OpenAI, um, get back the initial message, and then from the tool calls made during the initial message, in this case, it was getting the events for uh, you know asking what's on today's calendar. It's going to process it and call the MCP tool again if needed. So you can imagine if there was some type of collateral request for, hey, what's my schedule tomorrow? If I have you know a block in the afternoon, schedule me coffee with Joe, something like that. That's where it can get into more agent mode and iterate um, off of itself, off of the actual responses it gets back from the MCP. And then finally, after everything's confirmed, it sends back a confirmation message to the users with some basic formatting. And if we were to quickly skim through the LLM endpoints, um, we have the MCP manifest, which goes on, which is needed to initialize the application when it's running locally on your computer. So you could run it with um, applications like Claude Desktop, where they have their own UI to actually select which MCPs you want to use in your chat feature with Claude. We have the actual handlers for talking with Google to whether to get the events or create. If we quickly look at the create event one, we can see some authentication and libraries used for Google Calendar, start and end date, a title, make the event. We also have the option to add attendees to the event, which is pretty cool. You, know, you can imagine if you also hooked up your Google contacts directory as an MCP endpoint, you could say, hey, you know, schedule dinner with Matt tomorrow, I could see who's your top content contact Matt is, add their email into this Google Calendar event, making this a more fully integrated piece of software, which would be really cool. And yeah, you can just see both of these event handlers either turn back, return the result of what was fetched, do some formatting, and say if it was a success or not for the create stuff. So I hope that example made sense for our co Pilot calendar architecture, calendar copilot. And you can imagine how this simple example could be expanded out to more uh, real world applications, which it's already doing. So, for example, Cursor, that's the IDE a lot of people are using for AI coding these days. To con uh, they use an MCP to connect their AI coding assistants with external tools. I know a lot of people use Superbase, so you can actually talk to your code base when creating data tables. It can use your live super base ta uh, table schemas so it knows what type of requests to send and what type of data to expect. And this overall enhances your developer productivity and allows you to use live data as opposed to just what the model knows. Claude Desktop, which I briefly talked about earlier, can provide you a way of tools when actually chatting about any subject, I know they have the file system MCP built in automatically to their um, chat interface. So you could say, hey, you know, have I recently downloaded this MP3 file in the last month? And it can actually search your applications on Mac. And this provides, you know, a secure environment where AI seeks user permission before executing actions, ensuring control and safety. And then other big applications, of course, like Zapier, which is an automation platform. And they've integrated MCP into thousands of their automatic agents. So, for example, you could have an agent, you know, hooked up to your email. And then the agent can say, hey, if you, we ever get uh, an, an inquiry about, you know, someone looking to buy a product, we can immediately reply using a large language model tailored to who the sender of the email is and have that triggered automatically. So a lot of real world use cases 
for MCP these days, it's only going to get crazier. Now thinking of my own ways, this could be extended to real world applications for you guys to start building today. Um, one thing I thought of in sort of the Cal AI theme is like a diet meal planner. You know, I might be able to say, plan a week of meals to help me lose 10 pounds, low carb, high protein. And you know, if this large language model is hooked up to some type of MyFitnessPal database or hooked up to my Whole Foods cart or DoorDash, it can place orders automatically for me once it knows the tools available. And that would save a lot of the friction and busy work people need to use to meet their diet goals. Something I might honestly build, you know, especially with AI voice assistance, invoice assistance. <clears throat> Another great example is with invoices and how those can be assisted with AI. I've recently got exposure to invoices in the past year, handling it for my own personal stuff, and <laughs> it's a lot to manage and review over manually on your own time, but AI makes this super simple, can identify pitfalls and can assure you everything looks good. So you can imagine you can build your own SaaS where you can say, hey, you know, invoice to Sarah for 500 bucks. LLM uses an MCP to create and send a professional invoice, whether that's with DocuSign or some other secure transaction platform, uh, like Stripe as well. So a lot of potential there. And I know for a fact, uh, Figma and Adobe have used MCPs in their application software, very cutting edge. Um, but there's even more opportunities for you guys to build with it, where you guys, where users could say, you know, create me a LinkedIn banner for a summer sale. The LLM could use the MCP to, you know, what is the company LinkedIn? Let me go get that data. Um, you know, obviously LinkedIn might already be trained on the large language models, but more niche brands would we'll be able to type in, you know, their website and then a design assistant could go straight, scrape their website for the logo, the colors, stuff like that. And then you could integrate these uh, MCPs into services that already support them like Figma, Canva, or Adobe. Another idea is like a shopping assistant, you know, an app where I can say, hey, find me a gift under 50 bucks for a 10 year old that left space and the language model could scrape. Amazon, Etsy, Target, really simplify the gift buying process that a lot of people invest a lot of time in. Or even something, a good B2B MCP would be an inventory. You know, what's our current stock for XYZ products? Have an MCP hooked up to your stock database and work with platforms like Shopify, Airtable, stuff like that to give businesses um, more robust ways to communicate with their inventory. So a lot of potential here. This diet meal plan one's pretty cool. <laughs> Might build that in a later video. So we covered a lot today. We learned what MCPs are, and why they matter. We saw a real life example for how to plug one into a full stack app, Calendar Copilot. We talked about how real tools like Cursor and Claude are already using MCPs in production. And we also walked over some SaaS ideas for you guys, hopefully get inspired to build today. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you guys subscribe for more demos, ideas, and product builds I'll be sharing over the next week. Also like this video if you learned something, comment, really helps the algorithm. Everything I covered today for resources, I'll be including a link below from the code I used to the documentation I followed for setting up the MCP server. And thank you again. I will see you in the next one.